Alrighty folks, so last week we talked about all this stuff over here, and today I'm going to talk about some of this other stuff over yonder, or I'm, I'm not set up right now to really show you guys, but we're going to go through my camera case. I'm going to show you a bunch of the stuff that I take with me on film shoots, mostly wedding days, but if there were anything else I would need to do, then this would be the same gear that would go with me, because I'm still fairly new to this, and this is what I have. Anyway, so the thing that I'm going to start with is actually going to be my camera itself. I'm not going to show it to you right now. I'm going to show it to you through B-roll, but it is the Sony a7 IV. I've talked about this in a few videos lately, at least I feel like I have. I went with this camera for a handful of reasons, and the main reasons are basically just that it has everything that I really feel is necessary to have for a videographer in the modern day. Not the future, not the past, just today. It's got 4K60. It's got 120 at 1080, which is fine for me. It's got the crop on the 4K60, and I honestly always forget that it has it. It is not that big of a deal for me. It's got great autofocus. It's got great low light. It has got, uh, what was the last thing I was about to say? It's a full frame camera. So, I mean, it checks a lot of those boxes, and it was affordable. You can find cheaper cameras that'll get you kind of similar or maybe even better results sometimes. I did have a GH5 earlier on in the year, which I actually made a video about that. But now I have the Sony a7 IV, that's my go-to camera, that's what you're watching me on right now, which is why I'm not, like, holding it and doing show and tell for you. The other couple of things that I'm not going to be able to hold and do show and tell for are my Sigma 24-70 to art lens. Now, I've, this is the only lens that I have currently of my own. I do rent lenses a lot or borrow them from other videographers that I work with. The only one that I own currently myself is the Sigma 24-70 to art lens, so that looks like this. So this is the look that you can get from it. It goes down to a 2.8 aperture and it goes from 24, which is right here, up to 70, which is right about here. It's a zoom lens, which I like zoom lenses. I understand the benefit of prime lenses. Uh, uh, I understand the benefit of prime lenses, honestly, but I just like zoom lenses. I'll give up a little bit of aperture in most situations to have more ability to frame my shots correctly. I would say as a videographer, to the extent that I am, because I always consider myself not too much of like artist type of filmmaker, but more just a business type of filmmaker. But in any case, when it comes to me doing camera work, like I care about framing a lot more than I care about bokeh and depth of field and that kind of thing because it's like if you're not framed properly in the shot it looks bad no matter what the case really is. I went with Sigma instead of Sony because of the price. I, there's no two ways around it. If they were the exact same price would have gone with the G Master lens but I, I've used the 24 to 70 G Master lens, the Mark I, I, I guess. I think there's two of those ones. And I'm not that big a fan of it. I think I actually like the Sigma lens better. It's just easier to use. Maybe that's just because I'm used to it because it's the one that I own. But Moving on, the other thing that I cannot show you because it's on top of my camera right now is this Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and I've talked about this mic in the past just as well, but I love this mic because there's one very specific reason. It does sound great, it does work great, it's got the shock mount that it's kind of built into and the windscreen on and all that, so it sounds pretty good. As a matter of fact, I'll switch to it right now, at least for a little bit, because I have, we'll talk about that in a second. You're hearing the audio from the Rode mic right now though, and my favorite thing about this mic is that it turns on and off with the camera. This is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus is the one that does that, so I do not have to remember to turn it on and turn it off, which is something that really just got me in my first couple of weddings, was the fact that I had to keep turning this microphone on and off, and I just missed audio for all sorts of clips, because I'd pop the camera on and be like, oh, something's happening, and then something happens, and I'm like, oh, I never turned the microphone on, or the levels on were really weird, or someone, this one is kind of set it and forget it, I'm not supposed to say things like that, but that's the way that I've been using it, I just have it on there, and I just let it just goes on and off with my camera, which is really really fantastic. Okay, let's move into the actual bag now. So we'll talk about these guys a little bit. These guys, and this is also a case, by the way, not a bag anymore. So that's pretty cool. But these guys are my Freewell magnetic variable ND filters. So this little pack costs about $400. It is not the cheapest set. I can't grab this little thing right now. It is not the cheapest set of ND filters, but you do get everything in here. And the magnetic ND filters are really cool. I really do like being able to switch out my ND filters. Moving right along, we have these guys in here, which these are my Tascam DR10Ls, which are a wireless lavalier microphone and audio recording system, if you're not already familiar with it. Now, that is what you hear most of my audio through. I'm wearing one of them right now underneath 
this hoodie. It is on my chest right about here. You can probably hear me scratching on it really obnoxiously right now. I really like these things. They're very affordable. Are there better microphone options out there? Sure. Are there are more convenient microphone options out there, but I think that these sound pretty good for what they are worth, and I'm still a big fan, actually, of having audio recorders versus something that transmits back to the camera. A lot of people, if they're content creators, will go for a, like, a Deity Pocket Wireless or the Rode wireless go to or something where there's a transmitter built into the microphone or that comes with the microphone and then there's a receiver that's plugged into the camera and then so once you pull the file off your phone basically it's got the good audio tied to it. I did so much podcasting when I started out that I got really used to using this guy which is another piece we're going to talk about that would be in my camera bag if it weren't sitting here on my desk which is the Zoom H6 audio recorder but I got so used to using this guy where the audio got recorded into here the video got recorded separately. I would line them up in post, which nowadays is incredibly easy to do. I just got so used to doing things that way that I really like having audio recorded instead of transmitted because there's no interference that can get messed up along the way. People being on their cell phones during a wedding ceremony cannot like screw up your microphone system at all. It just records into the mic, into the recorder, which has an SD card in it. And then you put all those files on the computer you sync them up. The synchronization is another huge reason, by the way, that I like having the microphone on the camera as well, because I'll use that Rode VideoMic Pro Plus audio to sync to the Tascam audio once I get it over there. So getting off of my tangent, the Tascam DR10Ls I've noticed are starting to fade in popularity because you've got the Deity Pocket wireless system, you've got the BPTRXs from Deity, you've got the tentacle sync systems and all this type of stuff. I still like the DR10Ls. I think they're a super affordable, useful way to go about. They've also got some really great features as far as making it really hard for someone that you might put it on to accidentally disconnect the microphone or accidentally stop the recording or accidentally turn it off because the button is just not easy to press at all and the microphone or yeah the microphone jack locks into place it's just super great let's talk about this this is the zoom h6 this is an audio recorder it's probably one of the most popular ones of all time i think there are better ones out there now for this just as well but i've had this forever and i think it is personally one of the best purchases that i have ever made period. Having something to capture your audio, especially if you're doing any sort of podcast or if you're doing talking heads where you're using a real microphone like this one. I wonder if I can swing it around here without knocking anything else off my desk. You know, I could be using this right now, but just for the purpose of looks, I don't use this as much anymore in my videos. But having an audio recorder is just amazing. You can set this up with limiters and compressors and all that type of stuff. And you can record up to six different channels at the same time. You can adjust your gain levels with these little flywheels right on the audio. It is just great. Buy yourself one of these. If you have a little bit of extra money, I would look into a Zoom F6 or a Tascam Porta Capture X8. Those are the other two that I kind of wish I had right now, but I don't because I don't need them yet. And I have this. The only thing I don't like about the Zoom H6 and a lot of similar audio recorders is that they do run, this is running four AA batteries. Some of them will run like six, I think. And it's just annoying nowadays to have things that aren't rechargeable. In the bag here, I have some audio cables. And what I have in there is I have RCA cables, quarter inch cables, and XLR cables. All of that is for the Zoom H6. When I go to a wedding and I need to get the audio from the DJ, which will usually be for the speeches, not for the music, because using the music is illegal in 999 out of a thousand cases, but for these speeches. So I will go up to the DJ and I'll say, hey, I need to plug into your system. Most of the time they'll have some sort of way for me to do it. Sometimes they'll just be totally deer in headlights about it. So you need to know what you're doing a little bit with this type of stuff and also have all these cables handy because what you can do is you can run an XLR cable from the speaker into the audio recorder, or you can run a quarter inch from the speaker into the audio recorder, or you can run an XLR or a quarter inch from their soundboard into the audio recorder from a bunch of different ports. There's a bunch of different ways to do that. I actually want to make a video on that very soon. I don't know how soon I can make that video though, but that's why I have cables in my bag. We don't need to talk too much about that. I have my Mavic Air 2 in the bag. I made a bunch of videos about this back when I got it in like February of this year, which is 2022. So if you want to look at anything about my Mavic Air 2, you've got that to look at. What else do I have? I'm reaching around in my bag right now to see if there's anything I'm forgetting about. I talked about the task cam, talked about the everything else. No. So the only other thing I have up here is my lid organizer, which holds all my batteries, my camera plates, my drone batteries, my SD cards, gaff tape, if I were to buy it, which is something I've been telling myself to buy for a while. And I just 
don't have and should. Any miscellaneous auxiliary stuff like that, I've got cleaning supplies up there. And that just about wraps it up. The other things that I could talk about really quickly that would be with me on a wedding day or for any other film shoot if I'm filming a commercial or something like that. I've got this Kayer Kyer tripod, something like that that I use for just about everything. I like this tripod. Um, it's the one that is being used right now for this video just as well. It's got the right size plate on it, which is a big thing when I was looking for tripods. It seems pretty sturdy. It's got a maximum height of 70 some odd inches, which is plenty high enough for everything I've ever needed it before. It's got a decent fluid drag head system, obviously not as good as like these thousand dollar tripods that other places have and other brands make and whatnot. But Again, don't really need that with an a7 IV and a Sigma lens. And then I have an Avella monopod, which again, I'll link to all this in the description like anybody would, so you can look at this stuff more closely. But the Avella monopod seems like a pretty good entry-level monopod that I've been using. And then I've got the Glidecam HD Pro, which I bought off of eBay for, I don't remember what at this point, but I remember it was a pretty decent price. That's why I got it, and yeah. That is what's in my camera bag. So if you wanna know about any of that stuff, make sure to look down below at all that stuff. If you did not see the video about this stuff over here on my desk and you're thinking, Justin, what is all that awesome computer stuff that you have over there and why did you buy that? I've got a video on that. It's gonna pop up on the screen here momentarily right after I close out the video because all of my videos go to black and then I give you other videos to watch. So watch them, subscribe to the channel if you wanna know when the new ones come out and I'll be around, I don't know what that was, I'll be around in another video.